So guys, I just bought this gaming PC on Facebook Marketplace for just 600 euros. But the way I got it and the way I managed to get this price is pretty interesting. So let's get straight into it and then we will see how I can actually fix it up because it's full of problems, refurbish it and then make a profit on it. So let's get started. Basically, this guy wanted to sell this PC for around 800 euros and he wasn't really gonna come down in price but the PC initially had a GTX 1080 Ti that wasn't included with the specs. So I just told him, look, can you sell it to me without the graphic card? And after a bit of back and forth, he agreed. So I got it with just the specs inside here, which we will go over in a second. And I got this RTX 3070, still used from another guy for 370 euros. So the total is 970 euros. And the reason why I did it is because if you know a bit about tech, that GTX 1080 Ti isn't actually too far behind a 3070. So many of you might argue that it would have been a better choice to just keep the 1080 Ti. But the reason I did it is that the 1080 Ti is a 1000 series card and it's very difficult to sell, actually. I've tried it, people uh, think it's old because it was released in 2016 and it is a bit old. Um, it is starting to have a bit of problems with drivers and I have seen quite a bit of them fail because many were used for mining as well. So with that being said, I prefer to go this way. And now let's get over the specs. This PC has an i9-10900F with 10 core 20 threads. Many people argue that this is better than the 11th Gen i9 because in the 11th Gen they had two cores less, bringing it down to eight core 16 threads. Whereas this one has the full 10 cores 20 threads. Then we have 32 gigs of RAM, but it's 2400 megahertz RAM and it's some very bad RAM. Uh, but again, on a locked i9, on a locked motherboard, we will discuss it, but it's not gonna be too bad. The motherboard is a tough, uh, B560, if I remember correctly, or maybe even a B460, I have to check. Then we have a 650 watt FSP Hydro modular power supply. Then this 240 millimeters only one cooler from Enermax. Two fans on the front, why just two? Because the GPU, uh, the original 1080 Ti wouldn't fit with the third one, so we have to fix that because aesthetically it's a bit uh, not, not too good looking. Then again, 256 gig SSD. This iTech case, looking nice, but it's very dusty and it's got quite a bit of problems. So I say we open it up, take a look at it. So let's start with all the problems. Now, here is the first one, okay? Let's remove the dust filter on top. You might say, why? Well, do you see any problems here? Well, I see <laughs> that this screw is completely diagonally and the radiator is mounted the, the wrong way. As you can see, there are just those four holes here and it's not mounted at all in here. As you can see, it's bending. So this has to be fixed. It has to be, first thing. Then going on the radiator thing, uh, the tubes going backwards this way, they are not strictly a problem, but uh, it is a bit better to have them going front way. So we'll try to turn it. And then probably the most uh, evident problem is the difference in the fans. Each one of these fans is a different fan. This is an Enermax cooler, but he put uh, uh, Corsair fans on it. Then here we have an up here fans, two up here fans, and this is an original iTech fans. So this would be a nightmare to control via RGB. So that has to be fixed. I think we will swap them out, uh, all of them. This SSD is another problem. Aside from being a bit ugly there, we will mount it downwards, I think. It simply isn't possible to sell a PC with 256 gig SSD nowadays. So we are using a half a terabyte Samsung SSD, which I bought used for just 30 bucks. Uh, SSDs are cheap. And then we will also put another half a terabyte SATA SSD for storage, uh, increasing total to one terabyte. This will make it better to sell. The RAM itself is very bad, but it's not a problem, so we will keep it. Um, so I say we get started with dismounting, why not? But first, we will take a look at the behind, because very often, if the front is a mess, behind it's worse. Not all the times, but very often. And the back is actually pretty good. Nothing bad to say here. There is some duct tape, we will uh, see why there is some duct tape. Uh, but it's all good, the, the back is very good, yes. But remember guys, if you buy something used before dismounting it, you have to clean it. So let's bring it outside, let's clean it properly. Okay, so we are outside because it's gonna be dusty and uh, let's get started, it's gonna be a bit noisy. Uh, 
uh, anyways. Let's get this mounting, this rod, try not to let have it fall down and everything. Little life hack, don't use like uh, aluminum screws because you can see them, they're ugly, get some black ones. And don't diagonal mount your radiator, please. Okay, let's take it out, hoping that there aren't too many cables that are gonna interfere. Okay, yeah, there are. So, as you can see, the rod is not coming out. That, that's because there are the cables from the fans that have been very strictly cable managed and they are interfering. So we have to find out which one they are, disconnect them. So we'll do it, come back. So guys, I was dismounting the back of the case and look at this. This is how it should be. And this is what was done to the case. Basically with, uh, with some pliers, the guy bent this thing to route a cable under it, which is pretty dangerous. I actually cut myself. So we will fix it with some pliers because we cannot give away a PC like this. Okay, so we are taking it off uh, as you can see and now we are bending it better so that it's not gonna cut anybody and more importantly it's not gonna cut our cables which can happen if you leave those things by themselves they're okay we are smoothing the edges a bit now it's much better guys we are having a bit of a problem but i saved it but like uh, i undid a cable and the rod came falling down and i am fighting against duct tape I mean, okay, so with the rod out, it's time to actually take out the block and do a quick repaste. Let's see how the paste looks like. Okay. Ooh. Do I have to comment on that? Okay, so I guess I have to clean that, yeah, yeah, okay. And this is why you always check the paste in used PCs, guys, always, even if the temps are fine. Uh, this is extremely low quality paste, by the way, because it's so difficult to take out. I mean, with the paste that is just outside of it, I could have built three PCs, probably. It's even on the VRMs, guys. It's, it's everywhere. Okay, we've gotten the CPU like decent. Uh, it cannot come out perfect unless I dismount it, but I would be risking getting paste in the socket. Uh, but we have yet to do the actual radiator, so this is at least it's a bit easier. But like, just 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 look at how much paste there is. It's so difficult to take it out. It's it's, it's also kind of dried up um, which is not the best if you have a situation like this maybe having the pc warm up a bit can help you get it out easily but i didn't know i had a situation like this so i did not nice paste application time we're using some mx5 doing a simple dot in the middle so that we don't get the same mess as before right there and we good okay here we are slotting the actual cooler in it's a bit tricky because a weird design but uh, Nothing to worry about, just gotta be patient. Nice. Okay. I think I will do it off camera. Okay, we got it. So I'm now getting a bit of help. We are taking out these fans right there. And we decided to go with these fans over here. So we are putting two non-RGB, but very good radiator fans from Corsair on the actual radiator. And then we're putting those three RGB fans, which are all uh, four pin, if I'm not mistaken, three pin. We're putting all of them uh, synchronized in the case, one on the back, two on the front. So we will leave the space for the graphic card by leaving one empty in the middle. We are also removing the case fan, which is an iTech one, so that we can have uh, all the fans of the same type, which is always a good thing. So these are the fans that we're getting out of it. As you can see, two up here, black fans. Second one is there. Then we have an iTech fan and two Cooler Masters RGB fans. Now this is the case completely empty. 
we have now gotten the first fan on the back in and we're now installing the ones a bit more on the front okay so we've mounted all the fans i know it doesn't look as sexy right now but we will get it looking better and now it's time to actually slot that one in do some cable management and then get on with the build okay time to actually get the only one in properly we have already done all the cable management so it's really easy just a matter of getting to slid down which is not easy but it's doable it's difficult to have the holes line up properly but it's just difficult it's not impossible so we are managing to do it pretty well i'd say so it's time to screw it in Okay, the PC is starting to look finished. Now it's time to actually get out the SSD uh, and put our NVMe, a new 480 gig one from Kyoxia in there. So we take this one out, we put this one in. So this very good motherboard from Tuff has the integrated uh, heat spreader. Then we can slap our ugly green SSD under it, but nobody will see it, so it's fine. Oh, and this has Asus typical uh, lock in without screws design. There we go, now it's locked. That's good. The back seems perfect. I don't know about you. Some of you might say it's not keyboard managed. I don't believe it. Keyboard managed things. Now, the best part, guys, the graphic card. Let's open it up this Game World Phantom GS RTX 3070 triple fan. Now, it's actually one of the best 3070s I've ever seen. Let me show it to you guys. It's a very cool card with a very unique design. As you can see, the blades are free to go and this whole thing lights up in RGB. It has a double 8-pin connector, nice pass-through backplate, nice connectivity. Really, one of my favorite 3070s to date. So I'm very happy to be able to use it. Okay, let's slot it in. It's a pretty tight fit, but it should actually fit. So guys, moment of truth, will it turn on? Okay, that's, that's a good start, I'd say. Let's see if we got a signal. Oh, we got it. That's nice. Guys, we are having a ton of problems. The CPU is going straight at 90 degrees in the BIOS, which means that the cooler has some problems. And uh, it's not reading our NVMe SSD. This is the bigger problem because our NVMe is actually mounted and I fear it's the paste in the socket, guys. So we fixed the issue, now the cooler might have some slight problem uh, but now for now we fixed it i will investigate this further but what is for sure is that the top NVMe is faulty so it wasn't possible to start an NVMe in there uh, that's really not uh, what i was expecting but uh, it's probably due to the paste uh, or it could be just a defective uh, motherboard but hey we mounted it in the second slot under the graphic card so now we can install windows and test it out. We took out the cooler after mounting everything because it was still overheating. I did test it without the mounting mechanism and it's not just the mounting mechanism. It was also that that wasn't compatible, uh, but the real problem is the all-in-one is defective. Uh, if, you, if you touched it, it was hot in the tubes and here, but the actual radiator wasn't hot. So it is a clogged all-in-one. So today we will see how to fix a clogged all-in-one and how to change the fluid in a clogged all-in-one so let's go it's not gonna be fun but So I have some bad news, um, even after we refilled the cooler, it did improve a little bit in terms of performance, but it still wasn't able to handle the i9. Uh, I think it's a defective pump that we have here, either that or some other problem. Uh, I have no idea because the fans are extremely high performance fans. And again, I've tested these on other AIOs. I've tried swapping out the fans and we did a complete refill, both with distilled water and with graphene, liquid graphene but it still was thermal throttling so i had to swap out this arctic liquid freezer 2 which is honestly a much better cooler overall and that fixed the performance problems completely now even under prime 95 small fft after running for an hour it does not exceed 80 degrees with this and that is with the asus performance enhancement enabled with this one as soon as i started it it was going straight up to 100 degrees so there 
there is some kind of problem i think maybe in the cold plate like in the time it takes to transfer the heat i have no idea and the radiator was getting hot just here just here here was not getting hot neither before nor after the refill so some problems there i think i have to throw away this guy unfortunately okay so we have run a fire strike and the performance is actually really good let's take a look at the temperature and we got a maximum of 68 degrees on the cpu and then on the gpu it went all the way up to 83 degrees on the gpu and 105 on the hotspot which means that it is actually running a bit hot and it might be a good idea to do a repaste on the gpu as well especially because it was actually a bit noisy when running the benchmark so i say we do that <music> Here we are after the repaste now the performance is basically the same but the temperature temperature is much better we dropped 20 degrees on the hotspot and around uh, 7 on the gpu which is really nice um, after all 3070s were released quite a bit ago so it's time to repaste them if you have one repaste it it's worth it and we didn't even change the tunnel pads just the paste okay so here we are with the conclusions and yes i changed the microphone in the meantime now i have this maono thing so if you like the audio better please let me know and if it sucks let me know but anyways this pc was much more work than i expected honestly and it even ended up costing quite a bit more honestly uh, we have to count it towards the budget so initially again uh, we got the pc for 600 uh, then we got the gpu for 370 then we basically were done uh, we added a 500 gigabyte ssd so that does come out to around exactly 1000 if you pay the ssd 30 bucks which is what those cheap sata ssds go for nowadays but the cooler was absolutely broken now the repair process was indeed correct that is how you fix a broken uh, only one cooler or better an only one cooler that needs a refill or is clogged but in this case it still was not working so what i should have probably have done was like detach the tubes and like blast like a, with a pressure washer into the tubes again i didn't really do that also because the graphene uh, made everything extremely uh, hard to work on plus it could also have been that the pump was actually broken which could be so that literally took me two afternoons of work just dismounting everything because first i thought it was the bracket so i mounted different brackets then i took it out uh, fixed it once, put it back, was still overeating, did it twice. Then I figured, hey, maybe it's just the 10 core 20 threaded i9 that like draws too much power. So I tested with the Arctic one and I was like, this one is working. So a lot of time and we also had to get the Arctic cooler. Now, thankfully I got this one used. I got it for, I think like 30 to 50 bucks. So 50 bucks for the cooler, 1050 bucks total for the whole PC, not counting all the graphene, all the time, all the paste. I, I I wasted like three tubes of paste because every time I had to dismount a cold plate I had to like clean up the paste and we also had to repaste the graphic card which I wasn't expecting either but that makes sense because RTX 3000 cards came out in 2020 and we are three years later so they are getting older if you have a 3000 series card especially if you have a non TI version because the TI came out later repaste it trust me it's worth it repaste it we dropped quite a bit of temperature as well by doing that so overall uh, let's say 1050 plus 10 bucks for pace okay 1060 i think i'm gonna sell it for 1450 yeah so again making around well technically 400 bucks of profit 390 bucks of profit um which is not bad i'm not complaining but uh, it did take a lot of work uh, if we did divide it by hour it would be very little but i'm happy with the performance so let's go over those a little bit now that we have it fixed so cpu z score pretty good uh, around what we are expecting now that we have a good cooler we finally unlocked all the limits in the motherboard uh, so it's boosting past the stock frequency it is actually pretty much reaching the performance of an i9 1050k if you have seen the 900 euros budget build the one 
which we wash down with the garden hose, it's on the channel. Uh, this CPU performs exactly the same as that one. Uh, all that while having lower speed RAM, because low speed RAM doesn't really matter, uh, especially not with a locked i9 um, from 10th gen. So again, that was a good choice there. The GPU performs well, uh, now we'll show you the Firestrike score. And again, pretty good Firestrike score, 33K. In physics, the Firestrike went to around 26K. With the previous cooler, it was like 20K, it was terrible. Uh, combined, again, around 10K, which means that everything is working fine. Prime Ranty 5 Small FFT with the new cooler. It stays under 80 degrees at all the time. Great job, Arctic. I swear, Arctic probably one of the best brands this year. Very happy with it. The power supply, it works, no, not much to say. The case is cheap and uh, it works well, it also look pretty well at least in my opinion i think the build is well matched with this uh gray slash black team going on with some rgb i think the rgb fans we added oh i should have count those in the price as well so yeah maybe like 10 80 bucks we paid for the pc but anyways it wasn't a success okay but anyways the pc came out looking nice so i'm happy and we tested it in game now i won't go too much in depth but basically uh, tested the usual free fortnite uh, apex and warzone you you can play at around 240 hertz 1080p on Fortnite and Apex, around 165 at 1440p on both. And with Warzone, again, we know it's heavy. You can play at 144Hz easily at 1080p. You can play over 60 at 1440p as well. If you use the LSS and stuff, you can get it pushed up to 200 at 1080p. Uh, it does perform really well. So I'm happy with it, uh, but it's one of those PCs that like do require more work. We have some on the channel. If you remember the graphene cooled one, that was a mess. I think maybe it has some, something to do with graphene. Like every time there is graphene, it sucks. It also was like around this period last year. So yeah, do let me know what you think about it. Do let me know if you like it and do let me know if you would have done anything different with the cooler uh, or like to solve this problem. See you in the next one, guys. Oh, and I was forgetting. I do have an undervolting and overclocking tutorial for the components in there. You should undervolt your stuff, guys. Go check them out. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.